Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we have a single cask Springbank 21 from 2016, bottled at 49.8% ABV. Dustin, what can you tell me about this bad boy? So, all I know about this one, Mike, is it is a U.S. exclusive. Yes. So, they do a few of these here and there. I've heard, like, there's some festivals over in Campbelltown where you can get these. But this is a U.S. Uh, barrel and uh, came out around 16. Retailed for close to 500. I may have gotten this for like 220. Good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, it was a good deal. A steal of a spring, but yeah, a bigger ABV than we usually get out of these. The normal 21. So yeah, I don't know if they're. I don't, nice. know, I don't think it's casting because I've seen other single barrels where they've been very similar, like that 49, 8 probably. So mm -hmm. I think it's just a standard they've decided for their single. Yeah, it never, yeah, I looked on here when you brought it over. I never said anything that specifically said cast strength. So, Spring Bank's pretty good about disclosure in general. So, if it doesn't say cast strength, I would imagine it's not. But that's a weird yeah. ABV to pick, 49.8. Yeah, I don't know why they, well, you know, Americans, we're so used to 50% because that's such a common thing for the bottle and bond and all yeah, that other stuff. Yeah, for the bourbons, right. Whereas, I think maybe they're trying to avoid the intimidation factor that some scotch drinkers might have at 50%. Just bring down the tick underneath, huh? Exactly. Yeah, maybe that's how it went with it. Anyway, we're lucky to have it, as always, with these beautiful spring banks. Cool. Lovely golden color. We've done a few spring banks lately. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Madeira, the 12, and now this. So That's uh, right. The last time we got together, we had two. We usually just do the one, so mm -hmm. we're a... Uh, Hey, but we like Spring Bank, and we think you guys, a lot of you guys like Spring Bank, too, so we don't mind bringing you a great yeah. one, and I'm always uh, pumped when Dustin brings me these fantastic, rare Spring Bank whiskeys. Yeah, our analytics definitely agree that you guys like Spring Bank. So, yeah, everyone wins. All right, Dustin, what are we getting here, buddy? This is straight up candy, Mike. Whew. It is beautiful, beautiful sherry cast coming mm -hmm. through here. Mm -hmm. Wonderful bourbon vanilla notes are coming out. Bunch of vanilla. But then you do get that beautiful Campbelltown funk. And maybe the most funk I have gotten on an old age statement, uh, Spring Bank. Yeah, you're definitely feeling the extra ABV. You know, usually these uh, Spring Banks come in at 46%. A lot of them do anyway, mm -hmm. especially the 21s. This is age with, like you said, a ton of that Spring Bank funk. Yeah. There are sugar dough cookies in this thing for sure. Oh my God, yeah. You mm. know what? I mean, there's sugar dough cookies, but there's even like some Christmas cookies with some frosting mm. going on there too. I mean, it's very, very taken up. Yeah, very, very... Um, very sugar candy forward whiskey, mm -hmm. big time. Then you're getting a little bit of that vinegar barbecue I pick up on like a Springbank 12. Just, it's, it's very in there. And it's a mixture of the sherry and I'm telling you, there's a little bit of that funk. Oh, there's even a little bit of sea salt sneaking mm -hmm. in. A little bit of Dimatap, like that medicinal, with like super sweet, kind of almost grapey Dimatap note. And slightly smokier than a lot of Springbanks are normally, in my opinion. There's definitely some smoke on this one. I mean, sometimes, especially with the 21, 25, that smoke gets lost. Man, it's not lost here at all. Yeah. I've often said this is the oldest true classic Springbank malt. You're right. Because the 25, they lose, they lose all that. No, I mean, they've still got like a, there's a funk to them, but it's it's a 25-year-old funk that Springbank has. It's just unique. The 21s, I mean, some of those lately have been so heavily wine cast that you lose that stuff completely, <clears> which I don't mind because those wine casks have been delicious. Oh, Betty. Everything they do is pretty much top notch. Oh, yeah, but I mean, I'm getting oak, I'm getting medicinal, mm -hmm. I'm getting the sherry cask, I'm getting the spring bank malt, I'm getting the coastal notes. I mean, it's just, it's got the whole gambit. Yeah, I mean, I tell you what, this is so candied comparatively to the other 20 ones that I've had before. So sugary. You want, it's like, it's like, um, it's like that icing they put on um, the top of cheesecake sometimes, like at the Cheesecake Factory and other places. It's just magic. What are you picking up on the ballot? It's, it's intense. It's rich. It's bold. It has that classic Springbank sweetness. But then in comes this huge amount of sea salt. And there's peat. There's smoke. Mm, and there's a lot of sherry. And then just when you think you've kind of taken that whole gambit and all those flavors, then the whiskey transitions to the finish where the oak even rises up more. You get more of that like bookshelves and just deep, rich oak notes. There's fruitiness here, but almost like a mango, like not just like a tropical fruit, but like a really exotic tropical fruit. You know, it, it almost transitions a little bit into banana. I, like we used to with the mango, there's something acidic to it. There's also something really soft, and it almost comes off like it, can, it comes off like a, a banana cream pie almost. I mean, there's there's, the, that, there's that cookie top. sweetness there, but I'm getting more of like oh, I'm getting like a strawberry lemonade. 
that's what it is. If you're gonna think more like traditional candied sweetness, it's that. But man, it's it's more tropical than that. It's got it's tropical Skittles with lemonade or something, but not that sweet. You know what? I, I get the Skittles note too on that. But I, you know what I get into the banana? It's a, it's a twinge of banana. Um, it's it's with the sweetness though. That's why I said uh, like um, uh, banana pudding, like or you know some type of banana pudding with some icing on it. Okay. I get more of like a vanilla wafer with that sugar dough cookie. Like like a lemon or like a yeah. Vanilla. There's lemon and there's there's vanilla, or sugar cookie. So I can I can see where maybe you're getting that kind of banana note. Yeah. Yeah, banana cream pie, I would say. Yeah, which yeah. is kind of what it is. But no, I mean, there's a lot going on with this one. This is so sweet and yet really smoky for a spring bake. Mm -hmm. And then all the other things you would necessarily, necessarily expect out of a spring bake as far as the funkiness. It's got that funky spring bake sherry note. I think, you know, you, you pick up especially, maybe not in some of those like really mm -hmm. dark first fill ones, but no. all the other ones, they tend to have this funky, I want to say sulfur, but it's different. It's not that Craig Allocky or McAllen sulfur. It's... Spring bank funk. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't call it sulfur. I would just call it. It's the only like funky note. Like I can a tart think of smoke almost. Yeah, I'll take tart. Tart smoke. I would say more than that. It, it's just you know those overly those wine casts that are just or they get really dark, or really dense. That, that's a completely different element to me than what this is. But I tell you what, the extra ABV adds viscosity to it as mm -hmm. well. That's just really impressive on a, a whiskey that's old. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, 21 years old is, is an old whiskey. And you're right. 21-year-olds are usually the end of what we normally think spring bank when you think the traditional spring bank funk. Mm -hmm. This one turns it up even like a notch or two compared to what the normal ones are. Yeah. I mean, and again, I generally think the 18 is really where the funk starts going away. Some of the 21s bring on a little bit of it, but it's subtle. This is not subtle, Mike. This is spring bank funk full force. And the proof just adds that extra layer, which I think so many spring banks really need that. I agree. I don't know if I'm just giddy about this because it's higher ABV than 46. It helps a lot. It helps a ton. I mean, even, I mean, again, 3 4% extra, yeah. that's a big difference. I don't know that it needs any more proof than this, though. Like, you know, a lot of people don't want... People, a lot of people we've talked to are big 46% fans. Sure. This is not so intense that I think it's going to overpower anybody. Uh, Unless it, they're it's very... It's bordering on it. It's bordering on it. I think the flavors of the whiskey are intense enough for that. I don't know that the actual ABV is that high, though. No, I agree. But the, the style of malt this is... <clears throat> was an aggressive whiskey, period. Period, right. All That's right, good. so we threw a little bit of water in here. Usually we get to water a little bit quicker than what we just did. but Yeah, we had to go back in for a second taste with, without water. Yeah, it, it, it's a delicious whiskey. Because, again, it's not often that you get Old Spring Bank above 46%. I know we've hit on this a couple of times, but yeah. it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, Spring Bank could go to 48% on those older whiskeys. Oh, oh that's, a, that's, a, that's a good sweet spot, 48 That would be perfect. You know, I think uh, there's been a few distillers that have figured that out with their older stuff to just that extra inch. Mm -hmm. But Think about Lafroy 18, the old Lafroy 18. <clears throat> those are always 48%. Yep. And I never had that whiskey, and I've had it plenty of times. And we'll have it plenty of times. I never thought, this is too thin. No, no. But occasionally I'll get a 46% ABV whiskey and think, eh, it could use a little more. Well, when I compare like the Glendronic 21, the Parliament, to mm -hmm. the Allardyce, the 18. Big difference between 46 and 48. Yeah, and Big you know, people want to talk about the difference in the cast and all the other stuff. But or how old it is, when I get the newest <clears throat> bottle. I don't care yeah, if it's yeah, 22 yeah. or 24. Give me the that, vis that viscosity makes such a difference on mm -hmm. those whiskeys. Mm -hmm. And they're both beautiful whiskeys, but man. I take 21 all day over the 18. Yeah, and, for just that and I think it, it's just the mouthfeel. And my GPX maybe helps with the mouthfeel a little bit too, but still. Yeah, it's a stickier. It feels, the PX feels denser. Yeah. We're getting off track. Yeah, anyway. this, so this has gotten smoother. Just kind of like all the notes are kind of mellow. They're just, okay, they're, you're right. The banana thing <clears throat> kind of subsided away with a little bit of water. Yeah. You're right. It, it's more it's more dough, vanilla, vanilla yeah. type wafer with sugar on it. I'm getting a good bit of oak too on the, on the nose now. Like it's kind of become, and I get that a lot. When you add water, the oak tends to come up as a little bit more dominant a note. Agreed. But I almost get like a, those hard Christmas cookies with the, the white icing on them. You know, you know, people dress up the Christmas cookies every year. I yeah, I get the icing for sure. The Christmas tree one. I'm actually getting less cookie now than before, but. Oh no, the dough's still there, man. It's dough, but I mean, I'm almost thinking more like bread dough than cookie dough. It's thick. You you had to use a knife to cut through it. Leopard oh. knife. Yeah. Something serrated. It's beautiful still. Definitely, I like it better without the, uh, on the nose, I like it a little better without the water, but 
nothing's been killed. Nothing's been hurt. It took the water just fine. Yeah, it's still a super interesting whiskey. I mean, I know we do it that way over time. Normally, we drink we drink neat, but you know, even with this whiskey, um, this you know, as aggressive it came off. If I had like say two drams of this back to back, the first one would be neat, and the second one would be have water in it from the beginning. It's usually one where I'd pour two and just pour water in one right away. Yeah, I can do that. And then drink drink the first one neat, and get the second one with water. Ample time to open up because as we've talked about before. You've, you've worked this bottle down to a nice workable half yeah, it's been open for two or three years at least. And you always want to give it a nice spring bank time in the bottle open mm -hmm. and time in the glass open. Yep. Anything mm. else different with the water? On the palate, I, I'm getting a lot of the same notes. Uh, again, water's just kind of moved the oils around. It's shifted some of the flavors, but I don't get anything new or unique here, Mike. Mm. Um, all the same flavors, all mm. the same notes. They've just kind of moved around a little bit. A little less oily, and obviously the proofs come down a bit. Yeah, proofs come down a little bit. It's a little more acidic. <clears throat> yeah, um, which is water. common with water as well. Mm -hmm. A little more acidic. The sweetness is still there, but you're at the doughy notes. Are, take a step back. They're still there for me, but they take a little step back. They're not quite as fruity as I said. But that would yeah. be by three oh, pieces of what it Oh, okay, a little bit of, I guess, I, I, want, I was going to say astringency, but it's not astringent. It's more just kind of sourness. It mm -hmm. kind of comes mm -hmm. out a little bit more Agreed. with the water. And it's one of the reasons why I tend to not put a lot of water on some of the these more aggressive, earthy whiskeys. It's because I don't want that to be the showcase. I like the saltiness. I like the the cask sweetness mm -hmm. from like the sherry. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you put water in there, you tend to kind of move that stuff down a little bit more and you bring up the oak tannins a little bit more. Agreed, agreed. So, yeah, I agree. This is definitely, um, I would prefer this without water. Yeah, now if you let it, leave it alone for 20, 30 minutes after a drop of water, it'll probably get back more in balance. Those oils will kind of re, cycle they'll kind of get back to where they're supposed to be and it'll probably be fine but you're not getting anything new here no yeah it's not um yeah it's not changing the experience much at all no i agree so where are you as far as whiskey score on this one 91 mm. probably my favorite of the 21s i've had to date i put this right there with the uh, 25s as every bit as good as they are it, i could go 92 but i think i'm going to stop here at 91 for this one i'm going to be at a 90 i was i was kicking around that 90 91 I I don't know if it's my favorite 21. It may be, but I still don't think it's on the same level as the 25. Fair enough. I still think, a great whiskey. I think you've always preferred the 25 a little more than I did. Yes. So yeah. that's yeah, more not so. shocking. This one... And the, and the 2020 21 had a little bit more of a sherry influence. Why I like this ABV a little bit better. Well, that one had the port. And oh, that's what It had that was the black port, port and yeah. rum thing going on. It had sherry too. Yeah, so I, I tend to... Um, I, again, I like the ABV best, but I don't know if this this cast maturation is a single cask, obviously. Yeah. I don't know if I like it as much as some of the other 20 ones I've had, just in regards to the casks. Yeah, my, I'm assuming this started off in bourbon. They finished it in sherry. I don't think they fully disclose it, but that's my mm -hmm. guess. Or it's yeah. just a very... Re it's, a, it's a second use of a sherry, but... At least. If it's, if it's sherry only, I would think that sherry cask has been used a couple times. Yeah, but I, I'll tell you what, though. I mean, color, this is not... This is not lacking in sherry. I no. no, but it, it's, you know, all the Spring Lake 21s, I believe they're all in um, clear glass, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken, right? This is about the color I normally would expect them to be. We've had ones that are darker. 19 and 20 were darker. 18 was much lighter. True. 18 didn't have sherry. Yeah, that was all bourbon. So, yeah, I, that's, that's why I would say bourbon. if it's sherry. Yeah, bourbon. So, that's why I'd say if it was sherry, it would be a barrel that was used a few times. Oh, it definitely was. And, but I tell you what, the... But again, this is for your Springbank geek who loves the funkiness. Mm -hmm. The person who the 12 is kind of their apex whiskey. Yeah, this, this is this is the next level of that. Yeah, this is a big, bold, smoky, yeah. aggressive. Whereas, Springbank. you know, traditionally the 21s are more refined. Yes. This is not a more refined whiskey. Nope. And I I really appreciate that about it. And that's why I think this is my favorite Springbank of the age-dated non-cast drink series I have. Well, that's what we know. All right, so we're uh, we're pretty close to the same. We're ninety ninety one yeah. on. We're kicking around. It's an excellent whiskey, is what we're trying to say. Absolutely, excellent, excellent whiskey. So, if you guys had a chance to try this one I, again, how many bottles of this were made? Uh, two hundred something. I believe. Yeah, it, it's I mean, a low amount. But I can tell you, I do know there are still a few of these floating around. Oh no, never mind. Six hundred forty eight bottles. So this was a true sherry butt. Okay. And here they go. Yeah, one of six hundred forty eight bottles from an Oloroso sherry butt. 
So I don't, again, maybe it was full maturation in sherry. I thought for some reason I'd read that they started off in bourbon, but it's not what it says on the back and Spring Bank's disclosing an awful lot. Yeah, so I, that, that would make sense to me. I mean, again, it feels like a sherry cast has been used a couple times. Um, that bottle outturn seems like a hefty number. For That's what a sherry butt's gonna should produce. Yeah, no, you're right. You're about just right. back to my conspiracy on what happens to those other single barrels with their 200 bottles. Yeah, they're they're hiding them somewhere, <laughs> mixing them with something else. All right, well those are those are our thoughts on this particular Spring Break 21. If you guys had a chance to try it, just let us know what you think. And Dustin, until next time, what do we wish the folks? Happy drinking. We'll see you next time.